Hi, welcome to Dev Central and this episode of Whiteboard Wednesdays. And we're going to talk about iCall today. And you might be thinking, what is iCall and why do you have all this i stuff? Well, we have i rules, which are the data plane. It's client to server, manipulating that traffic between the client and server. And we have i control, which is our uh, management API that allows you to connect to your, your big IP and grab config objects, change config objects, pull stats, that kind of thing. Well, iCall is an event-based automation system. So whereas iControl is something that, that you are uh, either on a periodic basis from a management tool or you're just manually pull, going out and pulling that data, maybe you're, you have a config generation tool and it's going to do that when, when uh, you know, a, an administrator kicks that off. iCall allows you to have event-based automation on the big IP itself for such a time as an event occurs. And so there's, there's three components to iCall. We have the actual events and we have handlers and we have scripts. So what's an event? Well, event can be a, a file changes on the file system, a, a directory, uh, changes, you have uh, a failover occur uh, from big IP uh, to another big IP, a uh, pool member dies or all the pool members in a pool dies. Those are the kinds of events we're talking about here. And then you have handlers. And the iCall system has three types of handlers. It has a periodic handler, which uh, if you think more like cron, um, so you can set some kind of a time interval, and then when that time interval occurs, the handler um, kicks off um, and then will run a script. Uh, and then you have perpetual, and I will try and spell that correctly, perpetual handler, and that is um, like uh, an example of a perpetual um, I call script would be you're watching the shared core directory on your big IP. And if a file ends up in there, it's going to be a core dump file. So if something shows up in the core dump file, I want to kick off a quick view so that that quick view can be taken shortly after the core dump happens so you can get a, a feel for um, you know, the log files that, that were um, in the system at that time. And then you know, if you get, wanted to get really crazy, you could use the iHealth API from your big IP to go ahead and take that quick view, upload it to iHealth, and then once that's done and you've got your confirmation that that iHealth um, uh, quick view or the quick views out on iHealth, then you can actually drop a notification from your script to notify your ops team, hey, this just happened, core dump occurred, quick view's already up on iHealth, here's your, here's your URL. And, and all of that for me would have been a, an entirely manual process before iCall. And uh, so 20 to 30 minutes of troubleshooting and collecting files and getting them up to iHealth, uh, all taken care of automatically for you. So that's a pretty cool use case for the perpetual handler. And then we have triggered handlers. And the triggered handlers uh, come back to uh, triggering an event. So you have, uh, like I said, um, for um, uh, like a, a uh, big IP fails over from one to another. That's going to create a log entry and you can trigger on that log. Or if you have an I rule and you are passing data from the data plane via iStats to the control plane with iCall, then you can uh, set values into the iStats and then your, um, uh, your event handler, if there is a certain threshold that those stats have uh, overcome. So if you have excessive amounts of errors in, uh, if you have excessive errors on, uh, say you're, you're getting way too many uh, 404s or, or 500 errors, you've got bad gateway errors on your HTTP application, then you can have uh, iCall trigger uh, an event uh, to do something about that, whether it takes that pool out of service, whether it just starts a TCP dump so that you can have those stats to look at real time uh, is, is a benefit. But anyway, kind of the, the workflow, now that we have the information on 
the system that makes iCall. What is the what is the flow work like? And a couple a couple flows we'll we'll just cover, and there's there's a, a lot of ways that you can make this work. But a basic flow is you start with an event, and that event will then go to a handler for that event. And again, that handler, you define whether it's perpetual, whether it's periodic, or whether it's triggered. And then that handler will kick off a script. And an iCall script is essentially a TMSH script that is in a particular section of uh, the configuration. So whereas you can write a TMSH script, and those are all TCL based, um, and it would exist um, in the edit CLI script section. The, the iCall scripts are under the um, uh, edit sys, uh, CL, or, uh, uh, edit sys uh, iCall uh, section of, of the TMSH uh, hierarchy. And so any, anything that you can do in TMSH, uh, you can do in the, um, the iCall script. And so a, a more uh, advanced application might be that you start with a handler and say that it's a periodic handler and it's going to go out and check a, a stats field. It's going to look at pool stats and if I'm getting any kind of issues, we're going to kick off uh, from a handler um, and then it's going to kick off the script directly. And then that script is going to kick off an event which then will kick off another handler which will then kick off another script. So depending on what your use cases are and your needs, you can end up with all kinds of workflows. But some of the use cases that, that we've seen with, um, uh, with iCall, in fact, I wrote an article on one of them, somebody wanted to be able to shut down an interface if all the pool members were down. And so with iCall, you can absolutely do that. You can have it periodically look, so we would have a periodic handler, and it would look to see, do I have the pool members available? And if it doesn't have the pool members available, and in this, in this case, um, it's going to uh, kick off a script, so you know it's not the advanced one in this use case, but uh, so periodically it's gonna look, do I have, um, Pool members available. And if the answer is no, then it's going to kick off this script. And in that script, it's just going to do a TMSH, um, uh, I, I forget the exact call, but it's TMSH, uh, you know, essentially interface 1.1 disable. And then when pool members are available again in, on, its inter, uh, on its interval, then it's gonna look again. If they're available, then I'm gonna go ahead and enable that. And so that's a simple use case, and I'll, I'll link all the, the documentation for the articles that we've written. But I call an, a tremendously powerful automation system that gives you comprehensive control over your configuration and management functions by leveraging TMSH you can le leverage iRules for it as well. So thank you for joining us and uh, catch us next time on Whiteboard Wednesdays.